Welcome back, everybody, to another week of gym class feeders. I am Arcane Soda, today's gracious host, joined by Gotta Get Lucky. How are you doing today? Oh, you know, it's been an exciting day. Lots of snow and salt and ready for some leak to add on to it. All right. Well, while we sit here and wait for everybody to get their little... I guess there's some audio issues going on for one of the teams, but... So, what's your take on the new uh, Mythic items? I think League is building itself a giant house of cards that uh, could topple or could build a pretty strong foundation for the future moving forward. They certainly changed a little bit of the flow of the game. I haven't personally played too much since they came in just because I couldn't be bothered to learn them. I think the biggest struggle is that they changed the visuals of all the old items at the same time that they really brought in the new items. So it's led to a lot of confusion and discomfort for Not the Not to mention a the whole. completely different shop UI, so it's just everything's different and it's just like, good luck! <laughs> oh, and we're oh, going ab into absolutely. So, what bands do you think we'll see? Most of these players are pretty familiar with each other, so... Your work uh, a classic Morgana band, though. Always a given if you uh, want to CC someone. I'm not even sure. Um, I know who's playing what positions, so I I refuse to uh, put input into bands other than Morgana is expected. I guess the so only other suggestion would be Anivia, but I feel like it's going to be Elf and Pointyball playing mid lane just based on how the teams are lined up. So I don't think the Anivia band's going to come through. If anything, maybe a Lux or a Malzahar. And we do have Prowler looking to play top lane, so the Urgot makes sense. And the Zoe is definitely directed at Pointy Ball as a mid laner, um, and the Morgana Alpha as mid. Do you know if Yorick's relevant in the top lane with the current state of things with the new items? I would imagine that Yorick is always relevant, given his horrifically obnoxious skill set that just ruins everyone's day. Uh, I think that's a potential pick for Prowler here, because I know that is something that he used to play a lot when he did play top lane in the LCUS before. He did play it in the last round of GCFs in Squirrel Land Leaves, uh, before Split 6, so definitely a possibility. We see a Cog mob ban. I guess Ace doesn't get his Protect the Cog comp. I've heard Cog is actually pretty strong with the new mythic items, so that would make sense. Though we don't see Jin getting banned here, and as we all know, you either play, well, Jin, or Jin, or more Jin for ADC. Or you could just say, to heck with ADCs and just play a mage. That would seem to be a smart strategy. I mean, who wants to wait till 30 minutes into the game to be relevant? Well, as an ADC main, I guess I uh, am slowly raising my hand to that one. As as another ADC <laughs> main who has uh, slowly migrated to top, I can agree with you. And it looks like we have a Mordekaiser top for Prowler, so we won't be seeing the Yorick this time around. Any chance the Shen is a support, do you think? Um, I think it's possible. Uh, I don't think that Shen's going to be River Shen in the jungle. So I think it's possible that it's going to be a flex to support, but I think it's most likely just going to stay in the top lane. Again, yep. not and having I... too much information on these players, uh, Wraith and, or Smokey, I AD... don't really know who's going to play what. And we did see an ADC get drafted, so which ADC do you think this is going to be? Uh, High Noon? Uh, uh, Blood Moon? What are we thinking? I don't know, I feel like 
Shin's got some pretty quality skins. I do like the Project skin, as well as the Blood Moon skin, personally. Um, I'm hoping to see a Blood Moon Jin, but I'm not going to complain about a Project Jin. Honestly, High Noon Jin, I would be a little disappointed at. That's fair. Maybe we'll get to see uh, Barbecue Leona uh, cook this Jin across <laughs> the map. Alright, we're moving into our second phase of bans here. There goes the Jinx, another one of Ace's um, more prominent ADC picks. That does not make sense. Do they think the Jin could go mid lane? I mean, maybe. Uh, I just. I feel like Pointy could play the Jin mid, but at the same time, why would you play Jin mid? Absolutely. Mages are so much better. And we see the Lux directed at Alpha as a ban, since that is another one of his safe picks. And then the Xerath. Definitely singling out Alpha with a lot of these bans. I guess the mentality here is the only things that aren't showing are the two carries on the side of our right team. Um, which, realistically, there's not a huge amount of ADCs that are super relevant in the current meta. Um... Jin obviously being towards the top. Uh, almost saw Kaisa there. We see Lucian. I know Brandana has a lot of experience on Lucian, playing it across multiple different roles over the course of the LCUS. So. And it's his all-time favorite champion, so defaulting to a lot of comfort there. Ooh, we see Cassiopeia locked in for pointy ball. And now is the moment of truth. Will that Shen stay in the top lane, or will we see a last-minute shuffle? I think we're going to see it stay in the top lane. It's not a terrible matchup in the Mordekaiser by any means. But how's the matchup into Leona? It, it's going to stay in the top lane. Yep, definitely, uh, definitely the case. It would also be interesting to have a Shen in this comp. It, Shen is not really... doesn't really facilitate this comp much. Yes, you could put it on top of the Jin Zhao, but uh, Shen as a support is more someone you'd want saving someone rather than diving into the backline. They don't really have a split pusher to save. And the Ari is the final lock-in. Having had the opportunity to clash with Alpha last, the last couple of weeks, uh, definitely excited for this pick. He's very skilled on it and could definitely cause some havoc against the immobile Cassiopeia. Yeah, the mo mobility difference between the carries on both, just in both lanes, is honestly pretty, pretty big gap. Uh, Ari and Lucian highly, highly mobile. Cassiopeia. A bit more mobile than the Jin, but both of them are still very immobile. Jin's mobility is a little underrated given that, that speed up he gets, especially with the current uh, uh, item set. Well, looking at these teams, who are you going to give this one to? Hmm... I think the bot lane is going to be particularly fun to watch with uh, with Brandana and Alonzi Tardis uh, potentially having the advantage in chemistry and in comfort. But uh, I would give the advantage to Pointy Ball in the mid lane. Sometimes he can just uh, make you do a regular spin around there. And... In the jungle and top lane, I'd have to give the advantage to uh, Red Side, so I think uh, Red Side is going to have to be my pick. Yeah, that Mordekaiser certainly can be a bully to this Shen uh, early on, and that's probably going to be a little problematic. Uh, I do like, I do kind of like the Zinzo pick here because Zinzo can be a bit of a aggressive duelist jungler that can potentially. 
uh, bully the Ivern and hopefully build a lead there. Um, that is definitely interesting, though, given that we haven't seen Burden the Heretic in the jungle before. And if you want to be an aggressive jungler, you have to be uh, willing and able to scout your enemy and know where they're going to be at at all times in order to counter jungles. So something that will be interesting to monitor from someone who hasn't jungled as much. Well, the other thing to note is he did play support last season. And one of the things that supports generally have in their like list of responsibilities is trying to track the jungler. Um, so maybe he has a little bit of an edge there uh, in staying on that. Maybe he plays a lot of jungle in solo queue. I think he's been playing with Token too much because he's the only support and only jungle that I've known who can accurately track uh, the opposing jungle. So you may be a bit slanted there. By it's not about pressure. it's not about accuracy. It's about just having general ideas. Like, oh, these are rough timings, which definitely comes more so from being a jungler as opposed to a support player, knowing certain gank timings. But honestly, I'm excited for this matchup. I, yeah, I, I think this is. I think. I think this could be a pretty good, pretty good game. Absolutely. I, I unfortunately I don't know much about Snow, Smokey the Bear or uh, Wraith Ghost, so it's hard for me to comment on them or have confidence in them with my limited knowledge. But I'm looking forward to this absolutely. Any early guesses on who might win the skin showdown? I has anyone gifted Ace a gin skin? I'm. We I got my fingers crossed gym. for uh, blue side here because I'm. I'm a. Uh, uh, Cassie Pia has got quite a few fan favorites or personal favorites of mine. I bet skins. on red side. Personally, but we're about to see the evidence for ourselves. And it looks like we have skins on all sides, with the exception of the Zin Zhao. Uh, so someone did actually gift Ace a Jin skin, and uh, your favorite, Project Jin. Uh, Blood Moon's actually my favorite, but Project Jin it does hold some regard on there. I do like the skinnergy between the Cassiopeia and the um, Thresh. Um, so. I yeah, personally I vote for blue side on this one. And I will have to vote for red side. Uh, I knew okay, Lucian is a particular favorite, and uh, that Leona skin is just dirty. And it looks like we're not going to have any invade cheese, which is very saddening. And Rob, who was a slight no-show early, is also a little uh, late to get out of the shop. Um, interesting there. Probably not anything. Just trolling him a little bit. Could see a potential collision if Jin decides to walk up and ward the blue, but it looks like he's just going to head to leash instead. We did see that the Xin Zhao warded his own blue recalled to swap trinkets. Um, and then Prowler had also warded blue sides blue buff. Gonna get a Definitely, bit of tracking there. Definitely a smart play by a new jungler. Good to see. like you're gonna have a gank in the mid lane already trade of flashes meanwhile 
Ivern's looking straight for that blue buff and does steal it on the way out. He is spotted though, but Burn's just gonna go clear out the rest of his blue side jungle. And a major advantage in the top lane for Mordekai early on, hitting that early level two. Oof, yeah, Shen that is just some disgusting trading. Especially early on, you do not want to take an engage in the bot lane, and first blood goes over to uh, Brandana. Meanwhile, there's fighting in the mid lane too. Just fights everywhere. And, we and see in the that... mid lane, it looks like the snake comes out on top. A nice uh, advantage that's better than expected. Uh, I do believe a lot of that is credit to that early gank from. The Zinza uh, was able to chunk her out. Another dive going on the bot lane, getting some good damage onto the Jin. Uh, and that is exactly why you gotta respect the level 2 of Leona and Lucian. Giving them some nice early leads in the bot lane. Definitely interesting that Lucian is sitting on a ward there and Leona wandered off for a minute. Something they could have looked to take an advantage of. I don't necessarily think so because uh, Smokey was still level 1 when he walked into lane because of the early death. So I think Leona was close enough that they couldn't really look for anything. It looks like we're having another gank in the mid lane here though. Ari is going to be able to just walk away. Gets a nice charm and the ignite almost ticks down but the barrier comes through and it still ticks down. <laughs> Ivan does flash though. Got more trading going on in the bot lane. This time Brandana gets chunked though. Ivern's down here for the engage. Ooh, a very nice play, but it's just not enough. The heal comes through. And Brandana gets the double kill and dies for it. I think that's worth for um, Brandana. Because now they get some ship damage on the tower as well. Yeah, definitely worthwhile. She's got the wave pushing into the tower. And the bounty wasn't high enough yet. So the gank definitely takes back some of that value. Leona maybe overstays just a little bit. And Burn the Heretic's able to come in and clean up that kill. Yeah, tough situation there. You want to stay and support your jungler. He may have died to Zen Zhao if uh, Leona hadn't stayed, but Leona ends up sacrificing her life. more aggressive trading in the top lane. Prowler just saying, no, this is my minion wave. Go away. Yeah, but not as much of a discrepancy as we might have thought we'd see, uh, given that uh, there's still uh, five minions in that wave to catch him up. So about six min minions behind. Not great, but not terrible. I do like the respect flash from Prowler in the top lane there. I don't think he needed a flash away from the Cassiopeia. But, uh, and just, a bit uh, of a mistake by uh, Blue Team's jungler. Zen's out checking uh, Dragon a bit aggressively without a flash and uh, getting gangbang by. That was actually almost a steal. A mistimed smite and the Jin W almost takes it but Brandan is there to secure it. Um, yeah, a little bit of a mistake by Burn the Heretic, just jumping over without vision. Um, kind of just gives over Dragon, unfortunately. Look, got a TP play coming in to the bot lane. It is spotted, and they do manage to get out. And well, they are going to take a little bit of damage. In. That's a good hook. No play to follow, but that's all right. You're a gentle crab. 
And I'll burn the heretic is uh, getting a little bit of revenge for earlier. But the RA does save the day. And Shen wants to return the favor. Fighting it's going on all, all over party. the map right now. Fighting dissipates in the bot lane. Cassiopeia has no mana, can't really fight this anymore. And the bot lane of blue team decides to go all the way back to recall. The safe play. And that TP down to the bot lane definitely handed back a uh, large portion of the advantage in the top lane to Shen. So uh, I, overall, I think that'd be a, a big win for the blue side. Uh, Especially since the Shen was able to pick up the kill on the Ivern with that little save play. Absolutely. Point you fall really low on mana here. Could uh, could really enhance this uh, CS lead that the R is building up. You know what's really disappointing? We could have had a match of uh, uh, of westerns here in the bot lane. We could have. As much as you detest that gin skin, uh, would have been interesting. I don't think it's an awful skin. I just don't like it as much as the other ones. He's got so many good skins, and then he's just got that one, which is kind of a shame to see because um, Riot has gotten so much better about their skin design over the years, and High Noon Jin being his release skin kind of puts it at a disadvantage in that regard. TP coming in from Shen to dissuade this fight any further it does get the a nice taunt onto the Lucian, and it doesn't look like they're going to be able to chase too much more. But Xin Zhao is here if they want to look for a dive. The red team is definitely overextending with these uh, jungle gangs, really pushing under the tower um, and putting themselves at risk for these counter gangs. Blue team does need to make something happen here because they are giving up pressure in the top lane. Uh, plates over to Prowler. Looks like they are going to get some nice plates here themselves, but it is split amongst a lot of people. So. And Gold we saw the cost everywhere. And we saw, saw the bot lane actually make a smart play to not even try and defend those plates. Charm Blue lands team. onto Cassiopeia and they both almost just kill each other, but Ari was facing the wrong way for the castle. A lot, of desperation. A lot of uh, desperation showing in these ultis being used in the bot lane. It, it feels like the red team feels like they're on a timer to win this game uh, with how aggressive they're being in the spot lane. Well, that's just the thing with the good ulti here by the Jin. Um, well, that's just how the... Leona and Lucian Lane plays though. It's two very, very strong early game champions trying to build up as much as the lead as they can because the Jin starts to come online way harder a little bit later. So you want to try to get as far ahead as you can so you blow up the Jin before the Jin becomes relevant. That is definitely true, but it feels like they're overplaying that hand to the point where they're actually handing that Jin. Uh, the opportunity to take an earlier advantage than may be necessary with how much they're pushing under the enemy's turret uh, and then getting the counter damage. Looks like there was a trade of Rift for Dragon. Rift obviously securing first tower. Looks like Rift's gonna get another charge off on this next tower here. That's gonna hurt just a bit. But I don't think they actually take this tower here because Cassiopeia shows up to save the day. But that is going to cost Xin Zhao his blue side jungle. 
It is amazing how fast she can slither around the map without being able to buy boots. Come on, Riot. Give her back her boots. Well, she gets passive movement speed based on level because she can't have boots. Good response ulti from the Cassiopeia. But this is I a guess they bit scary. The snake in the boot. Very nice flash to get out, and that was pretty well played by Pointy Ball. Uh, Prowler had a really good ambush set up there, but that snake is just slippery enough. And now we see the game kind of bounce back to a neutral state. Got some vision clearing going on here. Looks like they might try to try to get a couple different catches. Looks like uh, Blue Side Bot Lane wasn't on the same page there. Yeah, I'd like to start to see uh, Red start flexing their lead around the map a little bit, but not diving turrets quite as hard. Um, that's liable to put them at a disadvantage uh, with all the globals and uh, movement that the blue team has. Looks like they find an engage on the Leona. But Leona might get up. Jin going hard nice. for it. Let's finish off the kill. Zinzel finishes off Revolution in the back, and it looks like the rest of that's just gonna dissipate, except Prowler TP's into the back of that. This could definitely be interesting. It's uh, four on three at this point, and Prowler TP in pretty much Prowler nothing. looks like he's just gonna go down here, and the rest of the red team should just disengage here. It looks like blue team's gonna be the one to say, yeah, we're gonna pull back. Kills now in favor of the blue team was a 3-5 discrepancy is now 9-7. Uh, however, the gold lead is still in favor of the red team by just over what that uh, first turret bonus would be. Well, more than that. Good flash nice. by Alpha. So it definitely looks like the blue team is finding their footing here, at least in the fights. Um, red team is making sure to push for their neutral or um, their objectives, though. Given the current state of things, who would you say is actually ahead here? I would lean towards the red team here, uh, given that they've got this turret advantage and they're going to be able to continue to press it. There's not really any significant damage on any of their turrets. Um, they're going to be able to more easily um, rotate around the map. Bottom lane for the blue team just gets absolutely wiped in a 2v2. However, it looks like Prowler is going to trade one out, but I, he should go down here in response. Oh man. That is the power of the Mordekaiser there. Looks like red team is going to set up for this Drake, and it should be a free one for them. Nobody really in the that area to contest on the blue side. And it does look like we're going to have a Bob Drake. Who do you think that provides the most advantage in this matchup? Uh, Cloud Drake is honestly super beneficial for both teams. Um, more people on the red side benefit from it than the blue side. Uh, at least for 
just like the depth of value. Um, I think the key alts to have the cooldown reduction on for the blue side are pretty much Shen and Cassiopeia. Um, whereas on the red side you have Mordekaiser ult, Leona ult, Ari ult. Even the Ivern ult is really good for fights. Um, you just don't have quite as much value in the uh, uh, Jin ult and the, the Jin Shen and er, Jin, Zin, and Thresh ults as opposed to the rest of, the, of their own team. Yeah, it's definitely an uh, interesting piece here. It's, the Leona dives in hard uh, versus three people with no damage. Uh, I don't know what the Leona is going to get done there without any damage, personally. Brandana showing why he chose this uh, Lucian here. Getting a pretty, pretty clean 1v1 kill um, against the Xin Zhao. Yeah, Xin Zhao effectively disengaged early, but uh, sticking around was definitely a bit of a mistake and a, some really nice kiting by Brandana. It's I think it was just a miscalculation by the Xin Zhao. I think he thought he could get enough burst damage out and the knockup and just finish off the Lucian. Uh, maybe underestimating Lucian's mobility and burst potential a little too much. It looks like Red Side is going to be taking Repair again here before it despawns. Fresh in the area, hoping to try to contest, but I don't think they're going to be able to. Potential catch on the Ari on the side. Everything used to keep this Cassiopeia alive. Ari dead in the back. A very good uh, taunt by the Shen. Oh man, everyone is just falling. Rift Herald did end up being secured by the red team, um, and it's on that Ivern now. So, likely to see them use it, maybe not to break this first mid turret, but at least to pressure the second one. Prowler knowing that he's a little too far forward without any friends, but does just go for the engage onto the Cassiopeia. In a little bit of trouble because of his own walls. Yeah, I think he doomed himself to the underworld in that case. Looks like they are just gonna use it to break this tower here. If they can actually kill the tower before that charge goes off, that would be great. But unfortunately, they don't save the health of Rift Herald. Charge is still going to do a lot of damage here. But can't for force an extra charge. TP coming in. It looks like Red Team definitely wants to fight this. With two deaths on the side of the blue team, it looks like this push is going to continue and hopefully break this uh, turret. But with Unfortunately, that though, timing, they're out of minions, so I don't believe they're going to be... I do agree with the call to just turn on the dragon here then. I don't really have the respawn timers just yet to force a Baron, and really beneficial to just kill this dragon on spawn. Get them one step closer to Cloud Soul and 
potentially uh, the next Elder or the first Elder Dragon. It looks like he's setting up a death wish here and probably going to fall for it. Very unfortunate. Does ult to kind of buy him some time for his team to show up. Pretty good heads of play by him. He almost got out of there, but a very good hook by Smokey does finish him off. Ult comes through from the gym. Another pretty good hook seals the Leona's fate. And an ult from the Cassiopeia just kind of to dissuade any further aggression by the red team. And this might be the Baron here. I run too low to really contest. No smite for now. A very good hook again to try to force even less aggression on is secured by the Cassiopeia. Another missed smite by the jungler of both teams now. And with that Baron secure, gold lead uh, finally goes over to the hands of the blue team. Overall, a really good... Uh, Really exciting game so far. Yep, definitely lots of blood, and I mean, overall, uh, with the exception of this Baron, a lot of objective control by the red team. get charmed and should die here. Ulti from Shen to try to buy her some more time, but she is still going down. And the difference we see in this fight is that you have the uh, 9 in for Lucian with you. Uh, when they uh, got going there at the Baron, Lucian was still back in the fountain. Yeah, not really any solid picks coming from the blue side to start that fight off, so... Um, did try to get a good pick onto Prowler, but his team was close enough there for it to not really work out for them. No tower dash coming through just yet from the red team. Both teams are looking for the pick though. Good charm lands onto Fresh, and that's just gonna be it for him. Shen comes in over the wall, and Jin blows up Lucian. And they just slowly kite out the fight. And this Jin just does so much damage right now. That said, so does Lucian, but Lucian can't do a whole lot of damage right now if he's dead. And Daisy just keeps on crawling. up in 20 seconds so next major fight should happen probably in bottom river with Baron and it, two minutes out and advantage to the blue team for that early on is we see Shen actually walking down there while Mordekaiser walked top um, obviously TP is an option but uh, being there in person kind of trumps that 
Mordekaiser in the top lane, but does have TP for the flank. Not called in just yet. The Leona taking a lot of damage and going down first. Not called in at all. It looks like he's just gonna keep going with top lane and just say, yeah, we lost that fight down there. Dragon yeah, is gonna go over really... to the side of the blue team for three kills, three one trade, and they just lose a uh, top inner and potentially some major damage on this inhib turret. Can't really foul alt prowler on that one. The only TP ward uh, was in the red side tri brush, so not a good advantage spot to uh tp in for the fight they did have um, one they did have a red ward in the bush uh bottom of mid lane bottom river mid lane that would have actually made a pretty good flank ward so i'm not sure if the call there was just to not have him come or if there was never a call for him to come Either way, he does pick something up on the side, so it's not a total wash. Lane caught standing on a ward is gonna go down for it. It's another kill going over this increasingly terrifying gen. And I think even more than the kills, the big story on this one is that is the 60 CS differential in the mid lane and the uh, 20 plus CS differential in the bottom. Lane. Another engagement in the bot lane. Looks like Burnley Heretic is going to go down to Prowler here. Shen should just disengage down in a 2v1 right now. Got another fight going on in the mid lane and Ace is just still tearing people apart with all that damage. Flash comes out from Brandana, saves him from one shot, but the next one's not going to be so lucky. Yeah, tough life there. Definitely would have been valuable if Leona hadn't been caught out and been able to join that duel. That might have led to them winning that duel there, despite the Jin's uh, 14 kills prior to that. Very fight. good flash ulti from the Cassiopeia gets a nice little kill on the Ari, and this could potentially be a death push here. I think they sh may reset here because they do have very low health bars, but they do have a lot of adv advantageous positioning here. Prowler is still trying to do what he can with his gold lead. The only player on uh, the red side that still has a lead over their lane opponent. That does tend to happen when you're sitting in the side lane split pushing for most of the game. Um, when the Shen is trying to group and make plays. Yeah, it could be argued, though, that the Shen should have matched him more, though, with both the TP and the alt available. He currently has both available right now. I do agree. Um, Prowler shouldn't be allowed to do quite this much split pushing, and he has been punished for it, uh, but he's not being punished enough for it. That said, I suppose we can't be arguing too much because... Things are obviously working out well for the Shen, sitting at a 6-1 and 13. Absolutely. Uh, being down uh, a level and a large amount of gold uh, kind of hurts, but yeah. Well, that's just the nice thing. The gold doesn't matter as much for the Shen because he's just one of the tanks. All he needs to do is use his abilities to do the CC, to do the shield. He does everything he needs to. Mordecai's yes are being... No, that actually can be melted for the most tanks. And a nice steal by That's the That's a very Ivern. nice steal by the Ivern there.
Shen is now matching the Mordekaiser in the bot lane. Um, but with this gold discrepancy between the two, is going to be a very bad time for the Shen here. Especially uh, with no magic resist outside of what's built into Sunfire Chaos. And having to deal with the super minions on top of the Mordekaiser. Thresh does show up, but maybe not the person you'd like to see help you out. Gets a kill, but will die for it. But that's gonna be Soul Point going over to the red team. And largely this game is gonna come down to who goes boom when uh, one team gets the Elder Dragon. Fights are, fights are becoming more and more consistently in favor of the blue team, but uh, the red team here has started to just make better, make more um, beneficial plays on the back of Prowler kind of drawing attention on the side, as well as their sneaky, sneaky Baron steal. I mean, I, I don't know if I can consider it sneaky, being they saw the Ivern sitting there across the wall and just let him take the Baron right out from under their noses. Yeah, but you still don't expect the Baron steal to actually come through, right? I expect nothing except chaos. Well, that's what we're getting here. Always makes for a good game of league. At least from a viewer's perspective. If you're a player, uh, chaos doesn't feel so great. Speak for yourself. Depends on if you're inflicting the chaos or uh, the victim of it, I suppose. I, I suppose I should clarify. Chaos is the only way uh, in reference to ARAM and Nexus Blitz. Uh, other than that, chaos is uh, terrifying. Wait, so you're saying as an ADC main you don't like Nocturne diving on your base causing chaos? No. No, I do not. not that sounds so pleasant. Not a fan. Blue team pushing blue Baron up here. Cassiopeia gets caught up a little bit. Looks like Shen is gonna go back to match the um, Mordekaiser split push once again. Baron does time out. Very good ulti, catching two. And a very well timed hook to secure the second kill in that engagement. Point trying to chase down. Not gonna be able to do it, but it looks like they should be able to get this tower up here pretty handily. Might lose their own inhib turret. But do you really care about that when you're going to be able to secure two inhibs yourself? No, you really don't. It, it, given that two inhibs practically guarantees you a Elder Drake or Baron, uh, it's an easy decision. Ray's doing everything he can on the Shen to try to stop that tower going down, but it looks like Blue Team's just going to push for the win here. And with five seconds still on the Aria, it looks like he'll get it. Probably auto attacks. Or maybe I'm they don't quite wrong. get it. With um, the carries coming back up for the red side, they're able to clear out the entirety of the blue team, and Prowler might not have even needed to teleport back. Yeah, it definitely looks like it, it stayed there. That could have been game with. Uh, at least 30 seconds on all champions. But as it is, uh, they'll be able to get some nice vision on the uh, objectives beforehand and might even Fortunately be able to get the for the blue team, power. there's no major objectives up right now that they just lose. Um, but they are going to take a hit here in the mid lane. Probably just the tower going down if they don't back off before then. Which it Definitely looks like they are going to respect the respawns and they are just going to say, you know what, fine, we'll set up for the next objective. We'll chill. 
definitely seeing the advantage of uh, having minions there since uh, uh, minion, not having minions completely prevented you taking from the tower. So as we look at this next fight, uh, we could definitely see the Shen match the Mordekaiser and get into the fight, being he has both alt and TP up, uh, while Mords is down from TPing back into that fight, so that unnecessary TP might have big consequences. Gold lead has closed to just 300-400 gold in favor of the blue team. I suppose that happens when you have a blood blast all over the place. And I guess when you steal a Baron, that helps get a lot of money too. Yeah, and while we do see that the Jin has a potentially a larger impact at this point than the Lucian, it, it's really going to come down to who lands that first critical CC or is able to split one McGraw and kill them first. And we see the Baron starting here actually and going down quite quickly. Red Team had full vision of that and consciously made the decision to say, no, we're not going to deal with that. We're just going to set up for Elder. Meanwhile, the blue team doesn't care about Elder. They're just going to send Shen there to distract while they just take supers as, with their Baron minions and finish the game. Yeah, and uh, the and back timing's definitely... Uh, we have the Mordecai sort of recalling, but that's going to be the only person to try to answer. He's just not going to be able to. Um. And what an anticlimactic end to a <laughs> bloodfest of a game. Well, this is quite the in interesting ending. I assume the Nexus has already blown up, but uh... It has. Uh, the, the client is quite <laughs> buggy. Riot, fix your shit. <laughs> Well, uh, spectator client in a nutshell. Can I just leave and see stats? I don't. I don't know what's happening here. <laughs> I would uh, suggest trying uh, fast forwarding or uh, or going or rewinding. That seems to be the best solution in these cases. We'll go back. Nexus refuses to go below 2100 health. <laughs> well then, no stats for you, sir. Alright, well... I surrender, I give up, get me out of this game. <laughs> ah, good news is we still do get to see stats, I guess. Um... So we're just going off the blind assumption that the blue team won since the client stopped working once they were hitting the nexus well uh, it does also say victory at the top uh with the blue color so we see a lot of damage done here by the Jin as we expected the uh lucian doing more damage than the Jin though just showing how strong he's been all game. Oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Well, that was a very exciting game. We'll see you back for the second game in just a minute.